I left Tewkesbury on the last stretch of the River Avon and headed west towards the River Severn. A short distance downstream was the rather large upper load lock. Once I'd gone through this lock, mooring would become more difficult and I would need to keep on going. So I'm now travelling down the tidal part of the River Severn, south of Tewkesbury and I'm on my way to Gloucester. Main priority is to keep up with the flow and watch out for floating debris. I'd been advised by the lock keeper that floating debris could be small branches right the way up to fridges or even whole trees that naturally move on the tides from out at sea. I was pleased I had opted for a more powerful engine as I could really feel the water flowing. Well it's been okay so far, I haven't hit anything which is always a bonus. It's a long time to stand on your feet on the stern of a boat. It took me two and a half hours continuously heading south, but finally I turned the corner and there was Gloucester Lock. Currently sat inside Gloucester Lock, we're just waiting for a cruiser to come in and then it'll close the doors and float us up to the canal. This is the start of the Gloucester and Sharpness Canal and the sheer size of everything was very impressive. Obviously with this being a big lock, it's taking a long time to fill up. The lock opens out into Gloucester docks. Once the deepest and widest in the world, it's now lined by brick warehouses. This warehouse positioned to the north of the main basin was the first to be built and was completed in time for the canal's opening in 1827. They were built to store grain transported in large ships and they needed to be strong to store the huge quantities of cargo. Within the basin there are a number of mooring pontoons, all with 48 hour limits. Nearby are water, pump out, waste and sanitary disposal. A number of restaurants and a gym line the basin, so plenty of entertainment. The main basin became so busy during the 1840s, ships queued up waiting in the canal for places to offload their cargo. So Victoria Dock was built in 1849, which is now home to long-term moorers. Within walking distance to the main city of Gloucester, with all the normal amenities, to the north of the city is the Grand Gloucester Cathedral. It's the burial place of King Edward II and Walter de Lacey. Harry Potter fans may recognise various corridors of the cathedral as it was one of the principal filming locations for Hogwarts. I came down to the Gloucester area as it was the closest I could get to my mum who lives in South Wales. I was really nervous about showing her my new boat as I knew how concerned she'd been for many months. I'm Jono's mum and here I am doing something for the first time in my life I never thought would happen. I'm actually steering my son's pride and joy, his own narrow boat. When he first told me that he wanted to sell his house and buy a narrow boat, I must admit I nearly had hysterics. We had a few strong words, I must admit, when I thought of the years I had spent supporting him in every way. But then, after months of trying to understand the appeal of a floating home, when I saw his first YouTube video and realised what a happy, healthy and confident person he had now become, obviously loving his new lifestyle, I began to think very differently. So it was the power of YouTube and episode one of this channel that changed her mind. She saw me in action, she could see how I've changed my life and how I thoroughly enjoy my new lifestyle afloat. Unlike today when the weather's been a bit on and off all day, it was a fantastic day and we thoroughly enjoyed going up and down the canal and enjoying the Gloucestershire countryside. Plus, she wants to come back again. Thanks mum and for you. Come on. So what next? Well, I'm going to carry on right to the very end of Gloucester and Sharpness Canal, where I'm going to turn around, film and document everything all the way back up to Gloucester. And then for the second time, I'm going to head out onto the River Severn, but this time travel north, um, go past Worcester, and then I'm going to go back up onto the canal past Wolverhampton, and then I'm going to end up somewhere on the Shropshire Union Canal. 
In the next episode, I discuss another essential to living afloat, and that's water. How I store it on board and how I use technology to monitor my usage. Don't forget to click subscribe to follow my journey. See you next time.